Hi everyone! In this video, we'll review what mathematical sequences are using Python. Before we get started, let's review the packages we'll use. These include NumPy and Plotly. Let's define what sequences are. A sequence is an ordered collection of objects. Sequences contain elements, also called members or terms. These elements can be numbers, for example, integers going from 0, 1, up to a certain number n, but they can also be things such as letters. For example, the English alphabet going from A, B, C, all the way down to Z. Sequences can be infinite, going on forever, or finite. In this video, we'll focus on finite sequences. The same elements can appear multiple times at different positions in a sequence. This is one of the properties that separates a sequence from a set. Let's go to our first sub-sequence, which is arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence, or arithmetic progression, is a sequence of numbers such that the difference between the consecutive terms is constant. Here we have the notation for it. For some given element, the element is the previous number or element plus that difference. And here we have an example of a sequence that we're going to code out. It starts at zero and it increments by one, two, and it goes up to 49. We can see the constant or the difference is going to be this one here. The way that we'll code this out is we're going to use list comprehension. First, I am going to define the variable. I'll call it sequence one. And I am going to use list comprehension here. I'm going to say num for num, and I am going to use range. And what range does is it gives me a range of numbers starting from zero up to a given stop point. In this case, we want to go to 49. So what we'll do is we're going to say up to 50, but not including 50. We can also give it steps, meaning that we can increment it by one or two. In this case, by default, it's going to increment by one. What we can do next is we can also print the sequence out and take a look at it. Great. And we were able to recreate the sequence one within Python. And we can see it starts at zero and it increments each element by one all the way up to 49 here. What we could do is we can also check that these differences are actually constant. So meaning the difference between each previous element is one. And we can obviously see that, but we, if we have a very long sequence, we might need to check that programmatically. The way that we could do it is with slicing. So I'll code that out now and I'll explain the code once before we run it. So I have two numbers, number one and number two. And what I'm using here is slicing and I'm slicing this into the even numbers, even evenly positioned index numbers and the oddly positioned index numbers. So it's going to, the even ones are in sequence one, that's going to be zero, two, four, six, eight, all the way down. And then this second sequence where we have one colon colon two is going to return all of the odd index position items in the list. So it'll be one, three, five, seven, all the way down to 49. We can run this and take a look. And we can see that we have one and zero when we subtract one minus zero, which is what we're doing here. We're using print formatting so we can do this dynamically and print out each number as it increments forward three and two, the difference is one, and we can see that the difference is constant. So this in fact is a sequence. We can also have sequences where we have, in this case, fractional numbers, one and one and a half, two, and this goes out to the 48th index position where we have this final number of 25. Now there's no way in range to have a step of one half, so we'll approach this one a bit differently. We'll still use list comprehension and we'll call this sequence two. And what we'll do is we're going to take the number in the range fifth in the range two to fifty-one because where the first element is one and it goes up to twenty-five. 
and we're going to divide it by two and that's going to return us one, one and a half, two. So we'll say num divided to, by two for num in range. And this time we need to change the start. That's going to be two because we want to return one. So two divided by two is going to be one. And it goes up to 51 because once we have 51 or 50 divided by two, because this goes up to, but not including 51, then we'll get 25. And we can print this out just to take a look at that. Great, and we can see we were able to recreate this one as well. So we have one, one and a half, two. We can scroll all the way down and we can see that we have 25 as our last element within our sequence. And like in the previous sequence, what we could do is we can take the difference of each and make sure that it's one half. And we can see that it is constant and it is incrementing by one half for each of the elements there. What we could also do is we can create this with a NumPy array, and I'll call this one sequence array. And unlike the built-in range, the np.arrange, so NumPy arrange, allows us to increment by fractions. So we're going to start at one again, we're going to stop right before we hit 25.5, and we're going to increment each of those by one half. I'm also going to print the type out and we'll see that it's a NumPy array. So we can see that the class is a NumPy ND array. And we can see that we have our same sequence here, but we were able to create it with a NumPy array rather than with a list. What we'll take a look at next are geometric sequences, also known as geometric progressions. And these sequences contain non-zero numbers where each term after the first is found by multiplying the previous one by a fixed non-zero number called the common ratio. Here we have the notation here where a, a here is going to be the first element within the sequence, r is that common ratio, and I do want to point out a difference between indexing the way it's done mathematically compared to computer science. So here, the n with the initial index position in mathematics, a lot of the times they start at index position one. Within computer science, all the indices start at index position zero. So instead of doing n minus one, what we'll do is just n. So I just wanted to point that out in case there's any confusion going forward. But at this point, most of the ways that indices are represented is using this computer science method where n is at the beginning is going to be zero. Okay, so let's work on actually coding out this sequence. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list called GeoSequence and I am going to again use list comprehension. What we'll do is we're going to recreate this sequence three where we have three, nine, 27 up to this one million number here. The way that we'll do this is we're going to do three multiplied by three. And the way that we raise something to the power is we have two asterisks and we're going to raise this to the num and that's going to be the index position for number in range and this is going to be 15 so up to but not including 15 and like before we'll also print out this sequence so let's run it and see if we were able to recreate this and we were you can see three nine and if we go all the way over here we have one fourteen million three hundred forty eight thousand nine hundred and seven as our final element within our sequence and like before we can also check for that common ratio but instead of subtracting what we're going to do is we're going to divide so we have the even index positions and the odd index positions we're going to, to take each one of those and divide them we'll print this out you can see 9 divided by 3 is 3, 81 divided by 27 is 3, all the way up to our final numbers, and we can see it goes to 3. And we can see that the 14 is cut off because this is odd, but that's not a big deal. We know that it is, or the common ratio is 3. We have a famous 
sequence called the Fibonacci sequence, and you may have heard of this. And just to go over the definition of it, the Fibonacci sequence is an integer sequence defined by a simple linear recurrence relation. The sequence appears in many settings in mathematics and in other scientists, sciences. In particular, the shape of many naturally occurring biological organisms is governed by the Fibonacci sequence and its close relative, the golden ratio. And the way that we recreate the Fibonacci sequence is we start off with elements, and in this case, they're integers, so we'll start with 0, 1. And what you'll do is you're going to take those initial ones, so it'll be 0, 1, and then add them together. That will get you the next number, which is 1. Then you'll keep doing that for however many times that you want because the Fibonacci sequence, sequence can be infinite. Here we have an illustration of the golden ratio, which is closely related to the Fibonacci sequence. And we can see that this spiral can be seen in a seashell. And there are many other types of biological phenomena that also have this golden ratio that seems to relatively that seems to approximate it relatively well such as in roses what we'll do is we're actually going to code out the Fibonacci sequence and there are a few different ways to do this what I'm going to do is I am going to start it by explicitly defining the first two elements of the Fibonacci sequence so it's going to be 0 and 1 and then from there, I'm going to iterate over this 15 times. So we're going to technically find the 17th number within the Fibonacci sequence. So what I'll say is for iteration in range 15, and this is going to initiate our for loop where our loop is going to iterate over this 15 times. What I'm going to do with our Fibonacci sequence is I am going to do a bit of index positioning here where I am going to use negative indexing and I'll explain this once I code it out. Okay, what we have here is what I'm doing in this with the Fibonacci sequence is I'm using negative indexing. So what I'm saying is what, when we are negative indexing here for the Fibonacci sequence, we're returning the negative second position, so it's gonna be zero, and adding the last element in there, which is gonna be one. So zero plus one is going to give us one. Then we append that to our list, and we have zero, one, one. And we're going to do that 14 more times, where now the second to last element within the Fibonacci sequence is one, and the last element is one. We add those together, we have two. 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, so on and so forth until we have 987 as our last Fibonacci number. And again, there are a bunch of ways that you can do this within Python or other programming languages. Recommend that you Google around, take a look at the way that you would approach coding this out. Next, we're finally going to move into real world applications of sequences and one that a lot of people will run into is if you have a bank deposit so let's say that you have in this case a customer has 1000 US dollars they want to deposit it with the bank the bank has an interest rate of 2.5 percent annually how much will they have over five years and this is technically a geometric sequence and the way that we're we're going to find the value of the deposit is we're going to take the principal, which is that $1,000, multiply it by one plus the interest rate, which that you'll recall is that common ratio, and then we raise that to the number of periods. The way that we'll do this is we're going to, again, start off with a, with list comprehension. So I'm going to call this deposit growth. And I'm going to say 1,000, which is the principal, multiply it by one plus the interest rate, so that's gonna be 1.025. We're going to raise this to the number of periods. So that's just num for num in range six. So remember that for the range, it'll go up to, but not including six. 
then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for the value of the deposit and the year in, and I'm going to zip together deposit growth and the range. And I am going to use print formatting to print this out. And we can see here that we have our geometric sequence for our bank deposit. So in the first year, we don't have any interest that accrued at all because we just deposited it. So we deposited at year zero, we have that $1,000. Over a one year period, we have $25 of interest accrue into our account. So we have $1,025. Then we'll notice that this increment isn't linear because we go from $25 of interest to $25.62 of interest. And this is where the compounding comes and we have the geometric sequence of the interest building up. And then all the way down in year five, we have $1,131.41. So if we just take the difference between our initial deposit, $1,000, subtract it by 1,131 and 41 cents, we can see that our, the interest that we accrued over that five year period is $131.41. And this is just one of many real life examples and you might actually run into this fairly soon if you're a student and if you're an adult, I know that you've most likely had to deal with this or calculated this or thought about this when you've chosen a bank to go with. All right, and then there are even more interesting ways that Fibonacci, the sequences can be used. And the Fibonacci sequence in particular, back when Leonardo Fibonacci really came up with this concept back in 1202, way back, one of the things that he investigated is how fast rabbits could breed in ideal circumstances. So in the scenario that he posed, a newly pair a newly born pair of rabbits, one male, one female, are put in a field. Rabbits are able to mate at the age of one month so that at the end of the month, you'll have the a female can produce another pair of rabbits. And in this simplified scenario, and a lot of times in mathematics, in statistics, even in machine learning, or some economics, you'll have these simplified scenarios. You'll what he said is the rabbits never die and the females always produces one pair, one male, one female every month from the second month on. And this was very insightful because nowadays the Fibonacci sequence is closely related to the logistic growth model. And this model is really what many and forms of this logistic growth model are what analysts and data scientists and scientists use to model population growth where it's initially exponential, but as resources become scarce, the population stays within the upper bound and even could dip a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dictionary and I'll call this rabbit dict. And for one of our keys it's going to be the rabbit population estimate. And that's just going to be our Fibonacci sequence. And then for our other key, we're going to have the number of months. And that is going to be a, another list comprehension where we say number for number in range. And the range is based on the length of the Fibonacci sequence. So in this case, we have, it goes from zero to 14. So we can run this and we can graph this out. I already have this done. And we can see here that this is the estimate of how the rabbit population would grow over time. So initially, let's say you're running some sort of farm, you don't have any rabbits, you go out, you purchase rabbits, so you have one pair of rabbits, one male, one female. They have a litter and you have still one pair because the they're not mature and they can't breed. But then after that, you have two pairs of male and female rabbits and then it goes on where it quickly grows in terms of the number of rabbits you have and finally at 16 months you have 987 rabbits in your farm that's a lot of rabbits 
I hope that this was useful. There are a lot of resources to learn about sequences because it's such a fundamental part of mathematics. Khan Academy has a great series where it's an online course you can go through, a bunch of videos and questions you can go into. The Organic Chemistry Tutor has a bunch of great videos on this as well, where he breaks down arithmetic geometric series as well as the Fibonacci sequence. And I listed a whole host of websites that you can check out if you want to learn more about sequences and the Fibonacci sequence. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. Feel free to like and subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, GitHub, and now Odyssey. Thanks again everybody for watching and happy coding.